first of all, uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and uh, to have the pleasure to share this room with my uh, mentor, Raul Mora. Uh, today, we are going to start uh, like making a presentation regarding uh, our process in the last uh, two years uh, called Multimodal Critical Consciousness, Criticality, Praxis, in classroom transformation. Uh, so basically, uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here he in the 56th uh, annual ASOCOPI conference. And of course, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here. So to begin, uh, I wanna start presenting an overview regarding the agenda we are gonna take into consideration uh, regarding this presentation. So as you can see, your screens, uh, the first step is gonna be devoted about uh, presenting a context for you as viewers regarding uh, what is this concept of multimodal critical consciousness about and the way we have been evolving the process uh, towards new, trend, new, new trends. Uh, secondly, uh, we are gonna move uh, a bit into the understanding and evolution of multimodal critical consciousness. Uh, to move on in the comprehension of classrooms as spaces for transformation. Uh, later on in the fourth step of our process, we'll have the chance to understand uh, what is the duty we as teachers, activists, as scholars have uh, into the everyday classrooms where we act as professors uh, or teachers. And finally, uh, we're gonna open a space for the conclusions and the questions about the public. Thank you so much for being there. Good. So uh, to begin, uh, the context. Uh, we're here today uh, to present uh, a domestic view of literacy uh, considering our Colombian reality. So to start this process of context, uh, I want uh, to say that uh, normally in uh, the Colombian reality and the con and the Latin American reality as well, we have been uh, adopting uh, different uh, traditional trends uh, from other cultures. The epistemologies of the West have played uh, an important role in the, pro in the process of transformation and understanding of second language processes in our culture. And uh, nevertheless, uh, there are some uh, key points to consider. And that's why we are here uh, today making reference uh, to how uh, the understanding of epistemologies based on our uh, evolving process uh, regarding the understanding of second language processes and the lack of interest that we have given to the real uh, impact our social cultural context is placing over us. Uh, I just want to start uh, saying that those epistemologies we have normally adopted, uh, we have normally adapted are completely out of context. And basically uh, they don't have a focus on uh, the understanding or the creation of meaning making productions uh, by the side of our learners and the people we have every day in our classrooms. So basically uh, there is it's a reason I'll behind over that comprehension of second languages. Uh, and it's basically that uh, those conceptions of education where the conception of the reader and the role of the teacher are so limited, uh, basically are seeking for perpetuating uh, war hegemonies, traditional conceptions of reality. And of course, uh, reducing the conceptions of the learners uh, as real actors into the learning process uh, helps to maintain this uh, kind of uh, cultural establishment. Uh, basically, uh, those limitations are based on the lack of interest given to the political, to the social, economic, behavioral, and of course, uh, to the way all those aspects are mixed in education and of course, uh, the way uh, languages in this case are taking place over there. So basically the intention is to understand towards new scenarios for uh, using and developing second language learning and uh, teaching processes. Good, uh, so 
Uh, as I mentioned before, basically uh, we have been adopting but not adapting uh, the epistemologies from the West and what have worked for their so basically we have ignored uh, our sense of reality, our consciousness uh, of culture, and we have just uh, taken into consideration uh, some factors uh, that haven't uh, helped uh, the education and the languages as well uh, to move on into real comprehensions of our reality. So, Basically, when I talk about the epistemologies from the South, I'm talking about our Colombian reality in this place, the, the specific uh, day, by day by day landscape that is drawn in front of us, uh, considering the death of social leaders and many other aspects uh, that basically are just uh, moving and forcing uh, education to deny what we have been doing so far uh, into the classroom context. So when I talk about the epistemologies from the South, I am basically open the door uh, to a wide variety of topics, uh, really uh, hard uh, comprehensions of reality uh, where uh, the real view of what we face every day is just being hidden due to particular interest uh, of the people who have the power and uh, we every day I are just uh, trying to uh, from the classroom uh, enhance and help our learners uh, not to uh, modify the ways they conceive reality, but uh, the ways to comprehend what maybe is not presented in the ways uh, we would like to to see it. Yeah. So now um, it is my turn to um, continue this conversation, and I'm going to walk you through how the uh, multimodal critical consciousness framework has evolved from this first idea of multimodal critical consciousness to where we are um, right now. And I'll save the name for. The slide that corresponds. So the journey in general um, started sometime around 2014, when I when I started developing um, some thoughts around the idea of consciousness as how, and I wrote a small paper defining consciousness as how by Freire. Um, then some of the work we we've done in the uh, the research lab with ideas on critical literacy and multimodality, and these first two ideas became what I initially framed as multimodal critical consciousness. Um, and a definition I'm going to show you in a little bit, and that later um, Andres took to the next step uh, on his research on multimodal critical consciousness as practice. That work has evolved and into what we are now calling multimodal consciousness as how, which is I an mean, emphasizing Freire's idea. Um, and there is a forthcoming publication um, related to that, um, the, the book chapter that you'll have a chance to read next year. So when we talk about multimodal critical consciousness, what we're talking about is bringing elements from criticality and multimodality together um, to think, to reflect on how we can develop more powerful forms of meaning making um, through semantic resources where we can engage, especially younger and novice learners in meaning making processes and criticality through those meaning making processes. Um, Andres takes the idea to the next level when he talks about multimodal critical consciousness as praxis. And this idea that the praxis involved entails not uh, moving away from talking about real life issues. Um, the, the, pot the potential of the spaces for critical literacy and these real life conversations and the meaning making possibilities this affords teachers and students in our classes. And that brings us to this final concept that is multimodal consciousness as how, where when we talk about multimodal consciousness as how, we're talking about grounding Freire's idea of consciousness as how in the reality of our classrooms, the reality of our daily life, the reality of the digital uh, age where we live in, and thinking about teachers and teacher educators in that role of scholar activist. In that sense, that there is a political dimension to the education, to the educational act, and meaning making processes can lead us further into that political dimension which also implies that learners become active participants of this um, of the uh, minute making and, their, and 
the uh, activist endeavor, giving more value to the words, bringing more positive for agency. And that helps us transcend um, thematic units. And we can start thinking about language as a way to analyze social societal issues, to, um, to analyze everyday, everyday matters, um, as you're gonna see the case studies that um, Andres is going to show us in a little bit. And then thinking about how we really conceive the classroom as a representation of reality and helping in thinking about language learning and language teaching as a way to contribute to the solution of these global issues. So that is what we mean by multiple critical consciousness and what's gonna happen. What I'm gonna do next is I'm going to give the word back to Andres so he can walk us through his experience in the classroom developing multimodal consciousness out with his students. And now moving on into the third step of this presentation, uh, I'm gonna be as clear as possible in the process of creating bridges between uh, what we see, uh, what is our daily reality, in this case as Colombian inhabitants, uh, and the way to connect those comprehensions of reality that are surrounding us into possible aspects to be developed uh, in our classrooms. I mean, topics worth to be analyzed that are denied, uh, we don't know why, uh, but moving on into what is supposed to be the connection between classrooms and the possibility to transform reality. Good. Uh, to start with, uh, as I mentioned before, this been a process uh, that started uh, at about 2019 uh, with my master's studies. Uh, so through the past of these years, I've had the, the privilege uh, to move on into different populations and uh, to work with different conceptions of reality that require uh, different ways uh, to be uh, observed and uh, from the planning perspective as a teacher uh, require uh, to be conscious of the population and what we consider as multimodal conscientis as how in this case and the connection between those spaces so in the next minutes i'm going to talk to you about experiences with a first grade classroom uh, some other experiences uh, that have emerged in the process of uh, interacting and trying to enhance the learning possibilities of, of a second language with high school students. And finally, uh, with my experience uh, as a public school professor at a university here in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, so I will move toward the explanation of those issues. Uh, to start, uh, basically, uh, we've had a, a limited conception of the learner independently of his stage his her stage of development uh, we have reduced uh, the learner object uh, the learner uh, as an object that needs to be filled so uh, if we start conceiving the learner from that perspective uh, we are basically uh, avoiding the amazing ch chance to make of our learners independently of the of their age active participants uh, in their process of raising their voices and listening to them uh, to what they perceive as a uh, conscious subjects. So uh, I start this path of presenting the experiences with those populations with uh, this production uh, that is basically a, a we could consider this a simple drawing developed by a student, but if we go deeper into the meaning and the representation of that uh, message, uh, we can observe subjects conscious of how uh, the trash in this case is affecting the environment around them. So uh, from that perspective, and with that type of topics that we bring to classes, we can cover the need towards thematic units and possible topics, uh, but also to start uh, generating and raising consciousness regarding topics as pollution and what is forthcoming in the next year for uh, us and those generations that are just emerging. Uh, so the way they will comprehend uh, the topic of 
pollution that has been rejected because there are also particular interests taking place there. Uh, how are we uh, helping our students from the topics we bring to classes to make bridges and to use the language not only for recognizing colors, animals, and objects, but to use what is around us uh, to make the language a tool uh, to understand and question those uh, topics that are not uh, taken all the time. Uh, in here, uh, when we talk about raising consciousness, uh, of course, recognition takes a meaningful role uh, when we are conscious about the impact, whether positive or negative, our acts place on the environment. That is a huge step but uh, it is necessary to move the, beyond the recognition of our acts. Uh, when we talk about raising consciousness, we are talking about uh, letting an impact, I mean, uh, giving something, trying to improve somehow that reality that is being affected. So in here, uh, you can observe with my first grade classrooms uh, at that time, uh, after showing to them through the analysis of their environmental reality, they became conscious of it, right? They started conceiving the topic from a different perspective, from a more profound. Uh, so I also use the infrastructure the school has. Uh, I use the, its surroundings to go with my students to break down with the four, uh, uh, with the four blocks uh, with the four walls, sorry, the classrooms have. And I went out from the classroom uh, if our intention was to analyze the environment, okay? So we went down from school and we started analyzing the surroundings around their, around their school. So important uh, analysis when students were presenting what they view through those walks. Uh, started to appear. And basically to make it uh, move forward a simple analysis and the recognition, I decided to take some seats to school uh, and to use the English classroom in order to plant, uh, uh, in order to plant the, the seed with a, a secret message created by students. I didn't analyze it so I can say they were right or incorrectly grammar and structure, but uh, because the focus was not there. The focus was on sen uh, creating sensitization processes where uh, students use the language in order to understand those thematics, those topics worth considering. Good. Now, uh, when we start moving uh, into the different uh, populations, the different stages where you all have the, the, the chance to carry out your learning processes as teachers. Um, we move uh, and we understand as students uh, are all the time bringing to classes the different experiences they face out of the classroom. So uh, why not to use those particular interests in order to make the class uh, more enriched and uh, more meaningful for the participants taking place there, right? Uh, we all know that uh, the Colombian reality is recognized somehow for the corruptions among different levels. So why not to use those topics that uh, students uh, are normally uh, facing through social media, through the social networks they every day uh, uh, confront with, yes? Uh, why not to use those conceptions of a corrupt reality to make the English class something relevant in terms of the recognition of the language, but also in terms of how to transcend the language to comprehend those, uh, uh, those representations of what its reality here in Colombia. Uh, from that perspective, I take over the new population where I was working, yep. Uh, in this case, your high school students, uh, where they simply through the fact of understanding and creating uh, new scenarios for topics like corruption, uh, they put it in evidence, uh, the way to structure uh, sentences, but if we analyze the real meaning through those uh, ideas presented, 
was uh, the way they perceived the corrupt reality in Colombia. It opened uh, the space not only to work the linguistic aspect, but to create discussions where uh, students, maybe in a funny way, maybe, maybe from a serious comprehension of the issue, uh, could go through it. Good. Uh, in the same way, uh, moving again to the contribution of the human activity to the affection of the environment, uh, students brought uh, into the classes uh, the analysis of uh, topics like fashion, uh, topics like uh, the use of daily uh, life issues that are contributing to pollute any uh, the environment uh, anyway. So in here, uh, you can observe an analysis uh, of how the comprehension of fashion and going beyond what is accurate to dress or not, to wear, to wear on, to put on, is not comprehended uh, as something uh, that doesn't transcend, but with the lens of uh, how those topics and how those uh, daily life issues are affecting our lives. Okay, now, uh, when I said uh, social topics brought to classes, uh, we can observe the impact in this case that uh, cryptocurrencies are having into the reality new generations have about money and stuff like that. So uh, in this case, there was a, a representation of a student who took into consideration how those cryptocurrencies can start uh, being possible options in order to uh, maybe avoid the pay of taxes and things like that, uh, just conceiving and bringing a new uh, understanding of uh, what is supposed to be money into our culture. Uh, good. After having the chance uh, to understand the context where this multimodal conscient is a sound, there is an evolution of multimodal critical consciousness. Uh, uh, after having the possibility to understand the context and to observe the way we can make those bridges with the reality we face, uh, uh, we face as teachers, uh, I want to ask you something, okay? Uh, what is your position in the classroom? Yep. In this case, moving on into the fourth stage of this presentation, uh, I want to show you uh, the possible duties we have uh, as professors or teachers. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to talk about uh, how are we understanding classrooms? Yes, it is the moment to rethink, as you can observe there, it is the moment to understand uh, our current educational context. Yes, uh, when we do that, as you could observe into the different experiences I just presented, uh, we will make connections between uh, the language, the language, the linguistic aspects we intend to develop, but of course, uh, understanding the classroom as a scenarios where uh, different social issues are taking place and can start complementing uh, the way we uh, seek for the understanding of uh, a new conception of classroom. Uh, first of all, the way, the first uh, thing we can, uh, the first thing in which we can do that is about uh, conceiving educational context out of the four uh, walls of the classrooms. Uh, sometimes maybe from administrative comprehension of what is required or not uh, into the learning environment. Uh, we as teachers are limited. Uh, sometimes if we are out of the classrooms, the administrative doesn't observe that as a, as a, as a space where learning can take place. Uh, but the invitation is to uh, really take a position as a professor, as a teacher, and start using uh, learning environments out of the classroom. Uh, we are not just limited there. Our students finish uh, their uh, school schedules and they just start confronting with an endless number of situations presenting uh, in their world. So why not to make of the learning experiences something similar to what we face as humans? 
uh, it will bring uh, as result the deconstruction of imposed social structures. Uh, classrooms are muted spaces and those social topics that uh, sometimes are rejected uh, are also taken away from the uh, school and the learning environment. Uh, so if we start conceiving and moving rethinking our classrooms, moving out from classrooms uh, as possible uh, expansions of the environments for learning, we are going to start the constructing those social structures that we observe that are present there, but no one's questions. So uh, if we start opening those spaces in classrooms, of course, uh, those biases uh, will have a different results into what we face. And of course, if we start questioning and deconstructing social structures, uh, it's not, it's not going to be what the teacher says in the classroom. It's going to be uh, the voice empowered by our students, uh, students that feel in the mood to talk because their voices matter, because they, their voices are important, because uh, it's not what the professor imposed, but it's a social construction where we can start uh, decoding and deconstructing those structures uh, through the uh, conversations and the daily topics we uh, start implementing in our classes. Good. So the invitation is to use multimodal conscientization and the different processes we uh, start and we implement in our classrooms through a transformative practice. Okay. So the invitation or the question here is. What is your comprehension of your role as teacher into the reality? Is this a static comprehension of it or is really a, an intended position to seek for change, to, just not, to not just criticize what we see, but to make of our classroom a spaces where those topics can be seriously taken. And of course, the linguistic aspects, the comprehension of stigmatic units will transcend from a real transformation of the being and the classrooms where those processes are, are taking place. So <clears throat> in a second moment, uh, it requires is it teachers' implications. Uh, it is time to stop conceiving the learning environment as what the teacher decides to bring it, to bring to it. Yes, uh, it is necessary to understand that uh, when professors establish or create uh, what they bring to classes uh, that is affecting and, impose, and imposing highly uh, the results or the comprehensions our students have. So uh, from a clear comprehension of what we want uh, to offer the freedom for students to raise their voices and show the way they are reading the world and analyzing the world where they live. Uh, finally, uh, this is the moment. Uh, uh, we are in a current social reality in Colombia where it's not optional, it's staying static. Uh, it's, it's not optional to just uh, let other people manage us through our power in schools as teachers. We can be educators, teachers, activists. We can start uh, imposing our students to move forward a static comprehension of English and multimodal conscientis as how is going to uh, help us to break down with those hands, uh, hitting hands of the oppressors. We're just going to bring, we're about to bring this home. Um, about to finish this presentation. Um, I'm hoping that you manage to find some inspiration in our idea of multimodal constitutes as well, and of course, in the particular um, work that Andres shared with us today. Um, we do have uh, a parting thought, um, and we decided that this parting thought, we're gonna leave it to um, the scholar, the thinker, the activist who inspired us in so many ways to get into this world. And so I just wanna share a quote from uh, Paulo Freire's book, Constitus Sao, where he says, and I quote, 
I'm absolutely convinced that education as the practice of freedom is an act of knowledge, a critical approximation to reality. That's what um, I think propelled us to think about first multimodal critical consciousness and then morph it into multimodal consciousness as well. This possibility, the possibilities of the classroom as a place where freedom and knowledge and criticality should happen every day. And that we firmly believe that the English classroom must be one of those arenas where freedom, knowledge, and criticality need to be present in every word that we bring to the class, in every sentence that we write, in every video that we make, in every post that we create. Otherwise, what is the point of teaching languages? So on behalf of Andres and the incredible work he's doing in the classrooms, and of course, uh, we have to make a shout out to the other two um, co-authors of the work we share with you today, Maria Camila Mejia Vélez and Elizabeth F. Agudelo, who are also presenting in this conference. I uh, want to express our gratitude for your time. Um, in case you want to continue the conversation, um, this is our contact information from Andres and myself. Um, for those of you who want to learn a little more about the Literacy in Second Languages project, you are welcome to um, check our website or follow us through the handle LSLP Legion, both on Twitter and Instagram. Um, so once again, everybody, um, good afternoon. So uh, have a great time. I think it's morning, it's in the morning. Have a great morning. Have a very, very good morning.